Royal Science Summer Cafe, and we're going to be doing a talk about Dreams ID. Dreams ID is an art science collaboration in which psychologist Mark Blagrove discusses the dream of an individual while I, Julia Lockhart, paint the dream onto pages taken from Freud's book, The Interpretation of Dreams. Dreams ID refers to dreams illustrated and discussed, dreams interpreted and drawn, Freud's notion of the id, and ID as the beginning of the word identity. These performances take place with an interactive audience as dream salons. Due to reports of people dreaming more vividly during lockdown, we decided to start holding our dream salons online, with dreamers participating by Skype and the audience seeing, hearing and engaging with the process through Facebook Live. We invited health workers and key workers from the US, Europe, and Australia to share their dreams in 90-minute online performances. Four of the paintings of dreams have been displayed at the Freud Museum London in an exhibition on the 1920 and 2020 pandemics, and others are exhibited at the gallery Aureal Science in Swansea, films of which are part of this video. The discussions trace back the components of the dream to the dreamer's waking life emotional experiences in the days before the dream. Each painting is made onto two pages taken, with the publisher's permission, from Freud's 1900 book, The Interpretation of Dreams. This method of using pages of Freud as a palimpsest acts to acknowledge his place in developing the method of free association to elements of the dream. It also enables the incorporation of Freud's words into the artworks during the painting process as objet trouvé. The importance of valuing dreams and the need to find artistic representations for them as non-linear responses to human and world situations has been emphasised in Surrealism from 1919 onwards. As described by Breton in the Medium Centre in the first Surrealist Manifesto and Jimenez in his 2013 book Surrealism and the Dream. Our dream discussion, public performances and my paintings of dreams made during the 90-minute performance are part of Surrealism. In this presentation, I show the original paintings and also the final artworks currently on display which have the dream typed out below an enlarged Gicle print of the painting. I will now describe the ten dreams and my paintings of them. At the start of lockdown, Mark Blagrove had a dream of being given a gift which included novelty activities, including a table tennis set with green bats and an old black mobile phone with the words funeral preparation kit. The kit was partly a joke rather than being serious. On the day before the dream, Mark had heard of a distant acquaintance who had died from COVID-19. As Mark only vaguely knew the person, the death was only a little unsettling but this occurrence did show that COVID-19 was real and deadly. Our first um, health and key worker who shared her dream was Libby. She was a nat National Health Service nurse who actually had COVID-19, was in, a, in her room quarantining at the time of the call that we had with her. This is her dream. Through the open door of a house, I see dangerous trees with strange leaves. I cannot close the door as it is so large. Inside there is a party. Everyone ignores me and my warnings. A man in red trousers, a composite of all loves of my life, looks at me, indicating not to worry. Adjoining is a room with a dead man on a bed, an old ventilator, and my recently deceased mother, alive with a cat sitting on her. The cat jumps up onto my mouth, stopping me breathing. You can see in the image that I've made of Libby's dream that the top half I have used to show the odd trees growing outside and I used um, part of a paragraph that had poetry in it to, to show the trees and this strange, um, scary surface outside. And that kind of black slab runs down to form the doorway, the open doorway. And in the discussion, she began to say that she was very small in this doorway, 
almost like a child, uh, which is how I've depicted her here. And then to the right of the tree is her mother with the cat on her lap. And then the cat is kind of merging into the trees, sort of next to the mother. And then the cat comes up again over Libby's face at the end. And Libby's face sort of almost looks a little bit cat-like like as well. And next to her is the dead man wearing the ventilator. And there's a light on in the hallway. And then there are people all over the stairs. And then there is her love wearing his bright red trousers. Serendipitously, the language that comes out into the branches uh, of the trees um, says Freud's words, branches off to the other branch, which I've kind of created as almost concrete poetry. Um, there's a dark, broodingly eerie feel to the image. And I incorporated many of Freud's words, which um, take on a living meaning beyond the original text. In reference to the red trousered, trousered man, um, I've um, highlighted the text, my beloved is mine, turn again to me, my beloved, um, which was in the, um, uh, in, in the uh, language of the text, in Freud's words. In reference to her quarantine, I've highlighted sweet dove, already you are enclosed in my cavern. And on the bottom half of the painting, there are many medical references. The next dream was a clinical NHS lab doctor. And she got in touch with, with us by tweeting her dream. And we made contact with her and she said she would like to do do the process, the Dreams ID process with us. Um, and actually many of our... Um, participants came to us through social media and through hearing about the project. Her dream begins, I'm at a desk in the hospital. A purple woolen blanket is on my lap with blue medical gloves. I'm peeling quail's eggs to be used to treat COVID-19 patients. But the eggs are soft and egg yolk spills and covers me and the blanket. The phone rings. I'm asked questions about the eggs. More eggs are being heated in a white medical bath. There are four paragraphs used in this dream. They hold the four sections of the dream. The quail's eggs in the box, the dreamer at her desk, her hands with blue medical gloves shelling the eggs, and the eggs splitting open with the blanket beneath them. In the section where the me blue medical gloves are shelling the egg eggs. There's this concrete poem, poem that I found within the text um, in, in this sort of serendipitous language of, of Freud. Um, I may feel disgusting situation. On the other hand, and sometimes delighted, dream problem. This is the dream of Tom a London-based doctor who had been graduated early from medical school so as to go directly onto the COVID-19 wards. I walk with my partner and a boy who is my son through olive trees and onto a sunny, sandy beach. We find a place to live in the cliffs, a comfortable cave with a TV, purple bedding on the double bed and paintings on the wall. A castle is above the cliffs, but the beach starts to become full of holidaymakers. Security guards in yellow high-visibility jackets arrive and the beach loses all its charm. The dream has a theme of becoming more responsible. Just as Tom had taken on responsibilities in Waking Life, in Waking Life he has no children, but the boy in the dream is his son. We realise the cave is based on a pub built into a cliff in Tom's university town. I wanted to show a journey on one page and height on the other, so I chose two large paragraphs with two smaller ones on opposing ends of each page. This allowed a mirroring, night to day, sky to earth, beach to sea, high to low, inside to outside effect. The following words are incorporated. The girl, wife, girl had, him, and together the two dream. 
The next dream salon that we did was a US delivery driver who was a key worker. He'd recently relocated uh, from one side of the country to the other to start to, to start a job um, elsewhere. We came across him also uh, via Twitter. So um, our reach for these dream salons began to be quite large and his dream went like this I am trying to drive a brown Mazda Maiata up the incline from a suburban house garage into the road but the gears keep crashing the car moves backwards and hits the white garage door a man and a woman in an old white car look at me almost with disgust I feel embarrassed as I was not being able to drive even though it is my job for the painting I chose two pages with four distinct paragraphs to encapsulate it. Um, The composition has a sense of warp. um, The brown car trying to move up the hill, the weft, the white garage doors as it smashes into them, and the busy road which crosses in front of the driveway. The two judgmental onlookers watch from their white van. Eerily appropriate words come together in the road. Manifest dream of another mistake. Stubbornly they look, overlook the distinction, judgment, efforts to perform the tasks, familiar. Again, I'm 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 working with Freud's words as a kind of palimpsest, and they're there beneath the work, and I I pull them out as I'm going along. The dream of Chloe, a Scottish teacher whose husband and daughter are both key workers. I am watching a robin inside a person, possibly me. The robin was picking with its beak and its feet at black tar-like COVID-19 all around the lungs, moving it into a pile so as to remove it. It was also looking for small worms to feed itself. In the discussion, Chloe spoke of seeing robins on her country walks during lockdown, these being a sign that life and the natural world continues and even flourishes, despite COVID-19. The dream is a very physical picture of the healing we get from seeing nature during lockdown. The robin was also taking care of itself by looking for worms to eat. This was a very life-affirming dream. For the painting, I chose bullet-pointed paragraphs to form the ribs or chamber surrounding the lungs. There were two sides to the dream, one where the robin clears the tar-like COVID-19 from the lungs and the other where Chloe Six watching inside the dark red chamber. The following words of Freud are incorporated. Under treatment, continuing the treatment, plant, flowers, friends of mine. A hospital worker from Australia had a dream of being inside a shell managing to get out and swimming in the ocean while seeing the land in the distance. A seal pup came up to play with her. This was the only happy dream that we were told during our project, although even here the dreamer said in the discussion that the dream was a reminder to her of her home in New Zealand and reminded her that she wished to visit home there. A student who had decided to live at her boyfriend's family home during lockdown rather than her own family's home dreams of returning to the family home. There was a golden monkey there and she knew that she should not be in the house. Near the end of lockdown, a carer told us a dream of walking alone in the country, trying to get to a village. She was wearing a red skirt and red jacket and crossed a thin rope and wood bridge. She had to ignore the advice of a group of people who told her to take a dangerous short route. She is then at the destination in a big hall, the sort of venue a wedding would be held in. A friend, P, is there, wearing a thin black dress, and a crowd of people start dancing to a waltz. In the discussion, the dreamer spoke of her life as an artist under lockdown, how she cannot go to her art studio that she has had to put off a trip to see a friend in Paris and that her plans with P for buying a house in France have been put on hold. That hoped-for house would be a place for music. In the discussion, we and the online participants remarked on how the dream was two halves, one of being alone 
even with a bridge for one person at a time crossing, and one of being with friends, dancing. We had an event at the Freud Museum, London, with author Michael Rosen. He had nearly died from COVID-19 and wrote a book about it, which included his dreams from that time. In one dream, he is at Land's End, which is at the lower tip of England, overlooking the sea. He goes over a wall at the cliffs and can't get back through a hole in the wall. Two men pull him through the hole while his wife pushes him. It is a dream of pulling through illness. We discussed the dream and metaphor with him. The film of the event is on our YouTube channel. As a result of his COVID infection, Michael Rosen had got glaucoma in one eye. My painting, by chance, has the words incorporated as found objects. Glaucoma. He is one-eyed like Odin. It also has the exuberance of my waking life. Michael Rosen is famously lively and spirited. I am a cunning fellow. Michael Rosen told us that in the dream he thought of himself as clever for deciding to go through the wall as opposed to over it, which may also be a reference to his famous book, We're Going on a Bear Hunt. The number 73, his age at the time of being admitted to hospital, is in the centre of the text. If you'd like to see videos of these paintings being created and of the online discussions, you can find them at our YouTube channel and dreamsid.com and our Facebook page. These paintings bring together the waking and dreaming life of the individual, which is one of the aims of surrealism. They show that everyone is a poet, able to produce novel metaphors to depict their life. These surrealist performances and paintings socialise the dreams of the individual. We have a Dreams ID salon at the Surrealist Conference on Saturday, in which you can be part of such a performance and see a painting of a dream being made live while the dream is discussed. If you would like to offer a dream for discussion and painting, please contact us.